little guys. Don't be shy. Come on, come on. <sighs> okay, this doesn't make any sense to you right now, but don't worry, it will. For now though, why don't we start somewhere a little bit more normal, I guess, for whatever it's worth. This video is about how to acclimate your shrimp to a new tank. Oh, I already know about that. Skip. Wait, 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 don't close me yet. You may already know a lot about this topic, but there's a reason I'm making this video and it's to answer two questions. One, you may already be familiar with drip acclimation, but are there times when you don't want to do it? The answer is yes, and we'll get into what those are soon. For those of you who don't know the acclimation terms yet, don't worry, we'll get to that. Question two, why are shrimp more sensitive than fish to environmental changes? We're gonna answer both of those, and we're gonna do that partly with the help of an experiment. I am moving 10 red cherry shrimp from this tank to this tank without any acclimation whatsoever. And then I'll show you the results at the end of this video after waiting a full month to see how they do. For reference, these tanks have very different parameters. While we wait those 30 days, let's go into what acclimation is, what different methods there are, and when it might be better to use one over the other. First off, acclimation is the process of adjusting an animal to a new environment that's different than the one they were used to whether in terms of temperature, oxygen content, humidity, pH, or various other factors. Proper acclimation is how we account for all these different factors. The debate is basically over how stressful the different acclimation processes are and how much stress shrimp can actually handle because shrimp are thought to be more sensitive than fish. This is believed partly because, like all invertebrates, shrimp are poikilothermic ectotherms. Knowing that, uh, sorry, what's poikilo whatever mean? <laughs> Hey, everybody, guess what? This guy doesn't know what a poikilothermic ectotherm is. And I was laughing at him. <laughs> yeah. I don't actually know either. No. Oh, okay. All jokes aside, this is why these scientific papers can be a little bit frustrating to read. I had to look this term up too, and it turns out it just means that they're cold-blooded. I get that the paper is trying to be precise and it's important to do so, but it, it's annoying. Anyway, just like lizards, shrimp are cold-blooded, meaning their internal temperature is entirely dependent on the environment around them. With that in mind, let's think about how a sudden environmental change might affect our bodies or those of our shrimp. Here's an example. I was dreading that, but glad it's over. The question of why I was dreading it though is something that you can probably guess. Our body temperature is at a certain point, and when we experience a sudden temperature change, it can be a really shocking experience. For humans, and with that temperature change, that's more just getting my heart racing. But the shrimp unfortunately didn't make it. The difference here between me and a shrimp, the reason why shrimp are more sensitive than fish, is because of their surface area to body ratio. I mean, just look at a fish or a human compared to a shrimp. Humans and fish have much sleeker forms versus all those spindly legs and thin swimmerettes, the wavy antenna. I would try to prove my point with math here, but how the hell do I calculate the surface area of an animal like that? Huh? Huh? It's hurt me. The point of this is that all of that surface area exposes their blood and organs to the external environment, so any changes in that environment happen much more rapidly and cause a larger shock to the system. It's like walking into a cold shower or doing the ice bucket challenge, but magnified tenfold. That shock is exactly what it can be like for a shrimp to be introduced to a tank if it's not acclimated properly. So let's go ahead and talk about the different methods to do that. The first method is the plop and drop method. For this, you just float the bag from the store in your tank until the bag water and the tank water are at about the same temperature. Then you net your animal out and let it explore its new home. The second method is drip acclimation, whereby you slowly add water from your tank into the bag by using airline tubing. Ah, smart, yeah, I like that. Anyway, you slowly drip the water into the bag until parameters in the tank and the bag match. Then you net your animal out and put it in the tank. This method technically can take as long as you want, but two to three hours is generally sufficient to let the water in the bag quadruple. And if you do want more detailed information on this procedure, you can check that out at shrimplyexplained.com. Now, let's quickly go over the pros and cons of each acclimation method. Plop and drop is fast and easy, but it only acclimates for temperature. In contrast, drip acclimation acclimates for all parameters, but it is slower and requires some equipment and preparation. 
You'll notice there's an asterisk next to this statement, and that's because after a couple hours outside the tank, the bag may not be quite the same temperature as the tank water. If the temperatures don't match within one to two degrees Fahrenheit, it's a good idea to float the bag after drip acclimation to bring the temperature in line and avoid shock. It's likely pretty obvious by now which is better for shrimp, but there are some really important details here that we want to cover. As I mentioned before, shrimp are more sensitive to change because they're cold-blooded animals with a lot of surface area. This makes drip acclimation a much better method for introducing shrimp to your tank in most circumstances. I say most because there's one particular case where plop and drop might be better. Let's say you ordered your shrimp online and are waiting for them to be delivered. The tracking originally said three days, but your order gets lost in the warehouse for a few days, so you don't get your shrimp for over a week. By that time, they pooped a bunch and maybe even one has died, so there's a ton of ammonia in the bag. In this very particular circumstance, plop and drop may be better if your tank is also at a high pH, at about 7.5 or above, and if your tank pH is significantly different from the bag's pH. That's because the toxicity of ammonia depends heavily on the pH. If you're dripping in water that brings the bag from 7 to 7.8 pH, then you've just increased ammonia toxicity 6 to 7x what it was, counteracting any dilution that might have happened. That's the one scenario where plop and drop might make more sense if you're buying new shrimp. Otherwise, drip acclimation is almost always safer, especially for the more expensive and sensitive species like Caridina. Now, you hear this, but you'll also hear on forums. <laughs> well, I didn't drip acclimate my shrimp and they're just fine. And yes, plop and drop can work just fine depending on two different factors. Let's go ahead and take a look at our experiment to understand that a little bit more. Before that though, did you know that healthy hair growth starts with cold showers and the right shampoo? That's right! Just look at these long flowing locks, and it's all thanks to Shrimp Jejina with their patented formula. What are you doing? Uh, an ad read. Shrimp Jejina is not sponsoring us. They don't even know about us. There's no way we got that big of a sponsorship. There, there's not? No, nobody knows who we are. We're not making any money. Then why are we doing this? I have no idea. It's a bit of a weird thing to be doing. Ah, man. That means I'm still bald too. Yep. Sorry about that. <laughs> no! Ah, okay, okay. You guys waited long enough for the experiment. Here's what happened to the shrimp that were moved to a tank with drastically different parameters without acclimation. They're all dead. Just kidding. I would not have let that happen. Immediately after putting them into the tank, I checked them every hour, then every day, just to make sure that they were doing well, and if it looked like they weren't doing well, I would have moved them back into the other tank. But they all actually did very well. So all 11 are still alive, and we actually have all, have, ugh, there's hair. Ah, actually, man, there's so much hair. I, I don't think, I actually, I don't even want hair. Anyway, all of these shrimp are doing well, all 11 of them are happy and healthy, and the three females in the tank that are of age are buried and about to have babies. So it's really exciting. After everything I've said in this video though, why did this experiment work? There are two factors that determine whether acclimation is likely to be a problem. First, how healthy are the shrimp? And second, how extreme is the environmental change? These same factors apply to people, so let's start there. In extreme cases of temperature change, there are reports of people dying just from the initial shock of cold water exposure, and that's more likely to happen if a person is old or sick. The same is true for our shrimp. More extreme changes are more stressful, and older or unhealthy shrimp are less likely to be able to handle that change well. That's why most breeders sell shrimp when they're only a few months old. It's also why it's not always the best idea to pick out the biggest shrimp if you're buying in stores, since those are probably the older ones. In addition, I want to clarify that temperature is not the only factor here pH change, GH, KH, any single one of those changes is stressful. And if you have multiple changes at the same time, then that's compounding the stress of your shrimp. For example, changing from the store water to the tank water could be like me being transported to the Himalayas right now, and having to deal with both extreme cold and extreme oxygen deprivation. Anyway, that is potentially what it's like for a shrimp to be introduced to a new tank. If they, they've just been thrown around in shipping or moved around, they've had a bunch of light changes, they are definitely stressed. Even if they're coming from the most reputable breeder, they are going to be stressed from transit. And so your job is to make acclimation as easy as possible for them. And of course, age and their overall health level before they were shipped plays an important part in this. 
That did not happen with these shrimp, though. They moved from a perfectly healthy tank to another perfectly healthy tank. And so they did not have much of a problem acclimating, even though the parameters were quite different between the tanks. That's why it's important to pick a trusted breeder to get healthy shrimp from, so they have a much better chance of acclimating to your tank. Assuming they are healthy, then you don't necessarily need to worry too much about matching the breeder's parameters perfectly. They should adjust just fine, especially for Neocaridina like these. If you do have time to measure the parameters of the bag that they came in and see how closely they match your tank, then it's a good idea to control your acclimation time depending on that. So if the parameters in the bag are further away from your tank, then maybe extend that acclimation period another hour or so. Just, it doesn't hurt to be safe. And if you are moving a healthy shrimp from a healthy tank into a new healthy tank, that's not necessarily a big deal. They don't have to deal with all of the transportation time and the stress that comes with shipping or even bringing it from a store. And assuming you're moving healthy shrimp from a healthy tank to another healthy tank, then drip acclimation isn't super necessary. So you can often just plop and drop and have absolutely no casualties, no problems, even if parameters are slightly different. Hopefully this video has given you a good overview of what acclimation is and why you shouldn't shower with your shrimp. Now you're probably thinking, I should add ice to my tank. And maybe you should. There might be some benefits there. Take a look at this video to find out. Thank you so much for watching and happy shrimping.